Hi, I'm Steven, and in this episode, I'm gonna try and train this cat to launch this rocket. The space race captivated the world in the 50s and 60s. As a result, amateur rocketry exploded in popularity, and soon after, commercially developed model rocket motors hit the market, allowing the general population to spend the past 60 years getting pretty ambitious with the kind of rockets they've built. I've never built a rocket before and want to see if I can learn how to successfully build one from scratch. For the second skill in this episode, people put a ton of time and money into training their dogs, but besides using the litter box, most pet owners put little effort into training their cats. It seems like this is because few people think it's possible. Do you think it's possible to train a cat? No. No? No. But cats are actually pretty smart animals, and I think that there may be a chance that all of those people are wrong. So in this episode, I want to see if I can learn how to build a super cool, super powerful rocket, and see if it's possible to train a cat to launch that rocket when I say the word engage. This episode is the Catstronaut episode. I don't own a cat, so for this episode, we had to borrow our writer's brother's ragdoll cat. He's one year old and is the best cat in the world. We just paused. <laughs> After a week of scratches and reluctant cuddles, we got in touch with Jose, an animal trainer from Australia, to get some tips on how to approach this challenge. We're talking to someone from Australia because none of the trainers from Alberta wanted to risk teaching me and it not working. Most of them suggested I try training a dog instead of a cat. What do you think the biggest difference between training dogs and training cats is? Well, both dogs and cats have a brain, so that means that cats and dogs both will be able to have their behavior modified using classical and operant conditioning. Now, potentially, we could say that, generally speaking, a large proportion of the dog population could perhaps be a little bit easier to motivate than a cat. But as soon as we find something that we can use sort of as currency in a training context with a cat, from that moment onwards, it's very similar. The currency Jose suggested was food. So instead of leaving food out for Blue to eat, I would feed slash train him two to three times a day following this training guide. Step one, charging the marker. Click the clicker and offer a food treat. Step two, you present a button and you click and treat each time the cat interacts with it. Step three, click and treat when he makes any movement with its paw towards the button. Once you have all those things in place, the behavior is under stimulus control and it is completed. Easy as that. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay, here we go. So it's click, treat. So I click and then I give him a treat so that he positively associates the sound of the clicker to the treat. Okay, click, treat. And the treat. Eat it. <laughs> You want it? Oh yeah. Spread it faster. Ooh. What's this? What's this? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I used a button as a wrap. Today I'm gonna try and start teaching Blue. Uh, to put his paw on top of the button. Put, put that there. Put it there. <laughs> <laughs> While I was working on what was turning out to be the monumentally difficult task of getting Blue to touch the button, I bought some small, medium, and large-sized kit rockets to start getting an idea of the fundamentals of rocketry. Oh, just something that we threw away. Pretty sure. So I'm pretty sure that one of the things that was supposed to be in the kit isn't in the kit. So I've decided to come up with my own solution for this, which always works. <laughs> as far as I can tell, these rockets, for the most part, I'm pretty sure are ready to go. So I think might as well go out and uh, give them a shot. Okay. Everybody careful! Shooting rocket in three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> no! 
Okay, let's go check it out. <clears throat> the first and second attempts with the small rocket ended with the parachute entangled. And on the third attempt, I packed it properly and it finally worked. Yes! I only got to shoot off the medium rocket once because I packed the parachute wrong again, it didn't eject, and got burnt mid-launch. And we weren't even able to shoot off the big rocket because I forgot to bring the right motors for it. So I think that it's probably a good time for me to get some help on this. While I continued to try to get Blue to press the button, I was able to convince an entire rocket club to give me some tips on how to build a successful rocket. It's a pretty simple sport. Get your fins on straight so it flies straight. Make sure your relationship between your center of gravity and your center of pressure, which is the math you'll have to do to design a proper rocket, is proper so that it flies upwards and not backwards. The center of gravity is the point on the rocket where it can be perfectly balanced. The center of pressure is the single point that all the aerodynamic forces on the rocket act through. In order for a rocket to fly stably, the center of gravity needs to be above the center of pressure. If CP is above CG, the rocket will try and flip itself over during the flight. What do you think is going to be the most difficult part about building this rocket? I always find the most difficult part for me is getting the fins on perfectly straight. I use my micrometer eyeball, which is getting old and not as good. You use, you use eyes, you just eyeball I it. I just eyeball it on there. Interesting. And well, I'm, I'm assuming there's other methods. Does anyone yes. else have any other methods that yes. they... Ken, Ken, Ken used a new method that I seen when he built that big club rocket. So the method I used was 3D printed template, two rulers, jig, largest aerodynamic forces. I want to try and train a cat to launch this rocket. When I say the words engage, he's going to press a button. Hopefully, do you think that's possible? No. <laughs> it's a dumb idea. The minute you let go of the cat, it's going to go somewhere else. I'm using a clean language here. And it's going to do everything else but press the button. Hey. Oh, God. Okay, let's try something else. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey, you want food? Okay, let's go. Okay. Oh my god, did you see that? <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> he's doing it without that already. I think he thinks it's the white stuff. It doesn't uh, stop being awesome. Best kid in the world. Because literally none of these rockets except for the first one I made was a success, I'm gonna put a ton of time and effort into making sure that this one I built from scratch is successful. I've designed this rocket in the rocket design software. And according to the software, should be a pretty good stable rocket. Okay, arming, good. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it worked. Oh my God. Try spinning it the other way so the nose is it's in the direction of the nose. Engage! Engage! The reason that I think that this rocket is flying backwards is because the center of pressure is in front of the center of gravity. Oh, nice! Engage! Engage! All right, here we go. Committing.
Now that I was pretty sure that both Blue and the rocket were ready, I headed out to the launch pad to give this finale a shot. The goal? Have Blue launch the rocket when I say engage, it flies straight through the air and come down with the parachute released and fully intact. Weather's looking pretty good today. We got a two kilometer per hour headwind with a maximum of eight kilometers per hour. Cloud coverage is looking not great, but we're gonna work with it. Rocket is intact. And uh, Chris Catfield, how are you doing? Meow. Well, all systems are a go. Rocket is armed. We are good to go. And we are launching in five, four, three, Two, one, engage. Come on, Blue. <laughs> okay. Blue, look at. Look at this. Look. Engage. 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 Come on. You pressed it. Why didn't that work? Blue has hit the button four times, but he hasn't hit it hard enough to launch the rocket. He's kind of lost interest in the button, which is a little nerve wracking for me. Pretty sure he's done for the day. <laughs> Can I get some more food? Yep. The same stuff? Good job. Okay. Engage! Engage! Four, three, two, one, engage. <laughs> Where'd it go? Go over that way. Why isn't she deployed yet? I just heard something happened. Where is it? Yeah. I can hear it. It's going down. I think it hit the ground. Oh, damn it! Ah. So... So many mixed feelings! <laughs> oh, man, okay. That's how you train a cat to launch a rocket. All right, as far as takeaways go for this episode, my first one is, is that cats can be trained. You just have to figure out a positive way to motivate them. My second takeaway is that even though instructions for how to pack parachutes are annoying to read, it's probably important to read them. And lastly, if people tell you a thing you're trying to do is impossible, sometimes it's better to ignore those people and just try really hard to do it anyways.